Hey guys, it's Erica here from Big Cat Creative and today I'm going to show you how to create a full width Instagram feed on your Squarespace site like this. Normally with Squarespace when you add an Instagram block it'll be just as wide as your max width for whatever page or section you're working on but it's a really popular design feature to expand it entirely so that it fills up the whole section and you don't have any white space on either side. We do need to use some custom code for this, but it's relatively simple and we always provide all of the copy and paste codes for you in our written blog post for this tutorial, which I will link under the video. This tutorial actually is for Squarespace 7.1 only and this code won't actually work on Squarespace 7.0. You can do this in 7.0, but it won't work with this code, you'll need a different code, and that code depends on what template you're using. So, one, if you're not sure which version of Squarespace you're using, be that 7.0 or 7.1, we've linked a post below this video that will help you figure that out. Now, if you figure out you are using Squarespace 7.0, then this tutorial won't apply, and you will need to figure out what exact template you're using on Squarespace 7.0, and the code for that specific template. So it is possible, but it is a little trickier. So in this video, we're just covering 7.0 and it's relatively simple. So let's jump in. Okay, so adding a full width Instagram feed into our Squarespace 7.1 website. So we're on 7.1 right now. I'm going to scroll to the bottom and add my Instagram into the footer. So with 7.1, you can add it to any section, whether that's in the footer or within your page. It doesn't matter, the instructions will still apply the same. So click edit on your page and I'm going to click add section and I'm going to add a regular blank section. So I'm going to add a new block and I'm going to search for the Instagram block. Make sure you have a account connected. So if you don't, you can connect one here or you can connect it within the settings under connected accounts. Okay, so my Instagram account is now connected and I'm going to adjust some of the settings within this block. You can actually really just play around with this and add your own settings. I'm just gonna add sort of standard commonly used settings. So I'm gonna change the items shown to six items. Under design, I'm going to leave it at grid, aspect ratio one to one square, crop images can stay on. I'm going to change it to six thumbnails per row and I'm going to change the padding to zero. You can also choose whether you want the Instagram images to open in a light box or if you want them to actually link out to your Instagram um, in a new window. So I would generally choose this one. If we're promoting Instagram, I want people to be able to actually visit our Instagram, but I don't want it to actually close out of the site. I want it to open in a new window. So that's just a little side note. So as you can see here, by default, the Instagram block has this extra padding around the side. I wish this was something that you could do built in, but it isn't. So we're going to remove that padding with a little bit of code. So just click out. Make sure to remove anything else that's in the section as well. So there's this sort of placeholder text block here. So I'm just going to remove that. Cool. So now we have our Instagram block. And the final thing that we want to do before we leave this section is click the section settings and change the section height to custom. So we're gonna click on the three dots and then it should be set to 10. So that's gonna give us the lowest possible section height. So just make sure to set your section height to 10 because it's a really important piece of making this work. So you should have something like this. Go ahead and click save on your page. So you can see we're pretty close here. We just have to remove all of this padding around the block. And we're gonna do that with some really basic CSS code. Now for this code, we have it all written out in the blog post for this video. So I will link it below the video. All you need to do is click on the link, open up the post, and the code is there just to copy and paste into your website. So I have my code copied. I'm gonna click on design, custom CSS and I'm going to paste it in the custom CSS area. So you'll notice that nothing actually happens yet because there's a couple of little custom tweaks we need to make. So you can see within this code, there's two sections. This first section says insert data section ID here, and the second section says insert block ID here. So essentially we need to replace these two lines of text with your section ID and your block ID. So those are unique identification numbers for your section. So we're 
obviously trying to target this section here that we just added and your block. So we're trying to target the Instagram block you just added. And both of these actually have unique identification numbers, but we can't see them that easily, but they are there. So it makes it really easy for us to target specifically that section and that block. Now you're probably wondering, how do we actually find those identification numbers? So by far the easiest way to find these numbers is to download this Chrome extension called Squarespace ID Finder. So firstly, you need to be using Chrome for this extension to work. It is a Chrome specific extension. If you aren't using Chrome already, you're going to find it pretty hard to find these IDs. There are ways to do it, but I'm not going to go into it today. It's probably easier for you to just download a version of Chrome and download this extension just to find block IDs. But I should say that Squarespace actually recommends that you use Google Chrome to edit your website anyway. And if you ever have any issues within the Squarespace editor, they're always going to tell you to try it in Google Chrome and then come back to them because they highly recommend using Google Chrome. So you kind of should be using it anyway. If you're not, I recommend using it, even if it's just to edit your site and use this extension. This is a pretty long URL, so I've linked it below the video. So just look for that link, click on it, and there should be a button here that says download. Now, once you download it, it will look like this within your Chrome window. So if we go back to the Squarespace site and then we come over to our extension, click on it, you'll see that it actually brings up all of those unique identification numbers which makes it really, really easy for us to see them. It basically pulls them from the code and brings us the only thing that we need. And what's even better is that if you click directly onto the code you want, it just automatically copies it, which is really great. So you can see instantly here, we have a section and a block ID. So it's pretty clear already where those go. If you click on the section ID, it's gonna copy it and just highlight where it says insert data section ID here. Try not to um, remove any of the spaces or anything that's already in here in the existing code as you might run into some issues. So there should be a space between this full stop. And as soon as you paste that section ID in, you'll see something funky happening. Just this is sort of trust the process moment. <laughs> we'll now copy the block ID and put it in the block ID area, same again. And you might not see anything happen there, but I promise it's working. So what I would do now is just click save and then refresh your page and you're gonna see your full width Instagram block. Cool, so there is your full width Instagram block. It should look something like this. Just be aware that sometimes when you're in the editor and you resize the screen, sometimes it can get some like weird little bits of padding on it, but that doesn't really mean anything. When your site is live, it should be working fine. And then also you're gonna have that same full width on the mobile site too. Cool, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and want more Squarespace tips, we release them all of the time. So please subscribe and I will see you over in the next one.